Oh, hello and welcome back to the Crowswood Model Railway YouTube channel and I thought what I'd do is it's just arrived or I've gone to just pick it up from a local shop is do a review of this uh, Kato train set which is the 10-012 which has a C11 and three wagons and a brake van or if you're American, I guess that's a caboose. Um, I've not had an engage train set before. So that's probably something fun to do, as well as show what comes in the box and what's on the box as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift it sideways as you see on the side. So again, Kato, Precision Railroad Models, N and Skip start Starter Set. Telling you what it is in the product code in English and in Japanese. SL is used to denote a steam locomotive or steam locomotive hauled service in Japan. And then the top, it's much the same with an annual shot of the loco with irons. And then there's a locomotive on the side. Again, same starter set. Nothing on the bottom, and then on the back, there's a quite a bit of information. Um, I still struggle with kanji quite a bit, assuming this is kanji. I struggle with all the scripts, but uh, the English I do understand, and the pictures as well. So this is showing uh, loco shed, various buildings, railway infrastructure. Platform kits. My platforms are halfway through getting painted into different colours. Shows you the expansions. So what you get is you get a loop and the controller. It tells you it's 677 millimetres wide and 1337 millimetres long. So it's a bit more than two foot by foot. Two foot is 607 I believe and four foot is 1220 so it's a little bit bigger than that. So the question is can I fit it in the space of just hoovered on the carpet. <laughs> a list of everything which comes with it that tells you your radius is 12 and 3 8 in 3 over 8 inches 315 millimeters for everyone outside America. And for reference, this is Pico second radius, which is about 10 inch or 263 millimeter. So this is going to be quite a bit wider than your typical two foot wide layout. Right, so let's see what's inside the box. It's a little bit unusual because usually these are on the back, these are what tabs, but they appear to be on the front. Instruction sheet included in this tray. You can also store trains and uni track in this tray. That's pretty useful. Because I've seen some of their train packs, various coaches and wagon rakes, you can store them in what looks like a book, a bookshelf, so I'm going to yoink this out and then go through the five vehicles in the set a bit more. So these are all the gubbins that comes in underneath this clear sheet. I have a locomotive I find particularly interesting. So it actually comes in what looks to be a hard case. Maybe not the fact to get out, but if I just move out my wagons and show them. So you've got a covered open wagon, a box, a van, there's a tanker, and there's a brake van. And going by what the back of the box said. Supposedly has directional lighting. In here, a 
a little detail pack. But back to the locomotive. Now I can get to it. It comes in the same sort of box that the C57 did. So you hard plastic box. It's just about make it through the bubble wrap. And so I will be getting that out in a minute. These are your, so you have eight of these curves, I believe, and they are the second range of them. Whoop pod is a shaky cam, but they appear to be actually kind of similar to the second radius. I'm going to have to have a look at that a bit more in some more detail. Controller, and it comes, this one does come with a British power plug. It'd be a bit iffy if it did come with a British power plug, we're considering now in Britain, so that's a plus. And here's your power controller, that is quite smooth, and this spins. Pleasant actually. Not sure if I prefer this or the combi that's over there. I'm using on test at the moment. I have to wait and see. Uh, that's where power goes in. You control it, the track plugs in. But this is interesting. These little nubbins here. Because that's where you plug your um, point doohickeys into. Uh, your levers to operate your points. Because all the points of Unitrack, which is this type of track, it comes uh, with a point motor already installed. So you just wire it up, or plug it in, you have to wire it up, into a little blue doohickey, which could plug it into the side of this, and this then powers your points. And I believe you can also get a box which plugs into this, which you can put a sound card in. And depending on how fast this is doing, it will produce the sounds of the locomotive. So if you, there is a C11 one, if you want one of them, and then you can have the, not the noise box making the noises of the C11 chuffing around. And you can then choose your whistle um, when, when it whistles. And I'm going to assume we can do other noises as well. I haven't looked too much into them to be honest. As a standard pack of a track though. Back on what's in the box and what's not in the box. It's more of a straight uni track. This is a very railing piece, I believe. There's your wire that goes into your track and your controller. Oop. This looks like the power track because it's got the doohickey on the bottom. I'll have a look in the instructions. And then uh, some more doohickeys. I'm going to assume they go on the side of this but as part of the re railing. It could probably be turned to look into like a crossing. And there's another short straight piece and then there's some really long pieces so let's have a look at what's in that tray that comes underneath this polystyrene stack first thing of note is a re-railer which also appears to have gauging telling you how far apart trucks should be and it also has a ruler on the top if it wants to focus I think it's pretty neat because I think those are in centimeters. It makes sense with Japan being a metric country, like most of the world. Um, and that is kind of neat. Actually, it's not too tall either. It just sit over the, the rails, kind of like the Pico one. But this has got more to it than the Pico one. Pico one just simply 
put it on track and your train goes on you can't use it to measure so this is quite a nifty little tool also includes paperwork in this tray for the set it tells you possible flashes being a bit weird but it tells you possible arrangements what comes in with it what you can add to it that's interesting because the second one so the first grey one shows the logo going backwards which is quite interesting I assume there's a product code so different wagons 2021-9 I'm pretty sure that is the code for the C11 yeah, it says 2021 on top of the C11 so telling you you can option choose which number you want change your front coupling out to a standard engage one the motor, it's got a flywheel and it's got directional lighting forwards. And at the bottom, that is the brake van, which says backwards operation, so it's the lights backwards. R216, oh, that's in millimeters, I believe that is the minimum radius the locomotive can pass. That's showing how detail goes on. And on the back, you've got your parts table. And so there are traction tyres on this locomotive. Be interesting to see how it runs compared to the C57. C57 is a thing of beauty. Uh, instructions in Japanese. And instructions in English. That's very straightforward. And yet that little tiny, tiny straight is the power track. Tells you what comes with it. Okay, it's going to open up, it's unexpected, so it opens up like a, into a, what's that, A2 sheet. So I will go follow these as I build it, because it's always a good idea just to do that, just in case something goes horribly wrong. Descriptions of numbers. Oh, that just tells you what, what track is what. Okay. And then lastly this um, I'm going to guess this is a catalogue oh, it's a track plan book and catalogue in one showing you what you can add I'm only skimming through this because I don't know what it's saying it's telling you all your different radii points yes it's a, essentially showing you what how you can expand that's interesting. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it together. Hopefully I can fit it in this space and then I will get the loco out and go through uh, testing and making sure everything runs all right. Very quick addendum with the uni trick in order to put it together, just make sure it's all lined up and snaps together. To undo it, I should away like that. That's what the instructions say, anyway. You can, I guess, pull it apart if you put enough force into it, but it does need to be pushed apart like that and back together. So that's how this uh, track system goes together. So with this, which is the power track, this piece there, see the shape of it, it's a bit wider on the bottom. 
it goes in like that from what I can gather because it goes in and then this wire so through this little notch along here and then this is where it plugs into the controller okay so here is the complete loop it's plugged in and I've got a green light which I think means there's power well there's power there's a power coming to the track that's what we're about to find out so I move the camera to here I am running on the carpet which is less than ideal but uh, the eventual layout will be going on raised plywood so that's something at least okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start placing on a little brake pad slides in there and goes there and then I'm going to switch the power on as it rolls of the, of the it rolls roll all the way down there because of the floor not being perfect you see the tail lamps are on so we have power and then I'll put the power on the other direction there's no lights on that side. I don't know if there's anything on the other side. That is something I will find out by flipping it around. Or are they only in one direction? Yep, they are only in one direction at the back quote of the vehicle. So the next vehicle for the set is this pretty nifty little yellow tanker which is really good at shining it's quite a small little thing and so I'm going to just put it on they're incredibly free rolling again this is not this is an old house so the floor isn't perfect And I've got this box then, number one, two, three, four. That's interesting. And then attach it on. Appears to be connected. And then my last wagon is this one with a cover on it. The cover is a little bit plasticky, to be honest, but hopefully it's removable. So I can impose it with something in it. But uh, yeah, the cover looks a little bit plasticky. The wagon itself looks fine. Right, let's put that one on. So that's all wagons on. That's all wagons coupled up. So, it's time. The locomotive, which is not numbered, much like our C57 and most of them. Instead, it will come with, it does come with this, which is very reflective. These are numbers, the number plate C11, um, and then whichever number I choose to put onto the locomotive. It's a little bit more of a faff to get this out. Try and do it on camera. So I'm lifting this tab. Just freeze it from the box. And then you do have Instruction sheet. Which tells you how 
things go together. Of course, the only thing I'm going to be doing is put the number plate on. I cannot read the rest of that just saying. So I need to figure out a way to teach me Japanese, which is better than that silly green bird app. And the locomotive. It's free because that comes down. So here's the engine. The traction tire is on the rear axle, which is a powered axle. And we see it's a two six four wheel arrangement. And this is the class used by the Oigara Railway. They dress up uh, as painted all blue to represent Thomas the Tank Engine. As a neat little bit of trivia. So let's put the engine on, and hopefully it works. Now, I'm not going to couple up to those uh, freight cars just now because I will run this engine in. Engine does seem to run. I'll switch the flash off because then you should hopefully see that it's illuminated. So what I'm going to do now is run the engine in and then reapply the wagons and well, share the complete train running. See you in about an hour. I have not set the timer yet, I was just about to, because as the engine comes around, it doesn't just have a light at the front of the C57. There is one also on the back. So I might have a look at how to fit a coupling on the front of the locker so I can then run this on a forwards and backwards. Righty ho. See you in a bit. Right, so I've had it an hour running in it, running, so half an hour each direction. It's a Really nice, really smooth. Flywheel seem to work okay. But it doesn't decelerate quite the same as the C57 does, but it still is a really nice, really smooth engine. This controller is a little bit of a faff compared to the Combi. It's really easy to knock the speed, uh, whereas it is, if you, ac you accidentally make it go a little bit too fast than you want, a bit slower than you want, instead of cause the the dial, so I've been fiddly to describe it, the, the dial is actually sure this is a lot freer to turn than the gauge master combi controller this is okay and it feels good in the hand but it is really easy to spin that that said it is a pretty good controller and of course you can extend to have your point switches operated off of here using these two connectors so that's a plus this switch is really nice and positive but this is a little bit wishy-washy I found just moving generally and with ticks due to um, the Tourette's, this moves, just my leg moves at the moment, it moves it, however if you're on a proper layout it would probably be fine, but I do prefer 
how the Gage Master Combi's dial feels. It's a little bit stiffer, but not, um, and it's textured, but this is just smooth. So it feels a little bit nicer because it's got those little notches on it. Otherwise, well, this is probably the the best starter controller out there for a trip. Any or any any of the train sets. So if that's double O or N, this is probably the best one. Right. So thinking on these curves, these are supposed to be second radius. However, they are very close. There is difference, a little bit of difference. Just make sure, because this is two 22.5s, and you can't see. They are a little bit tighter. So bearing, bear that in mind if you are looking at getting one of the Castle train sets instead of one of the Pico starter sets. And if you do want to do the Pico starter set, the C11 like this and the C12, which is a 262, will both run on first radius. However, bigger locomotives, tender engines, they won't, because the tightest they can do, at least going by the instructions, is about nine and a half inches. So they don't have the same flexibility that this does. I am going to do is I'm going to go quite low and see if I can show how the um, valve gear looks as it runs. So here's the valve. It'd help if it were on, wouldn't it? I think I get a bit more control out of the Gauge Master controller as well. This is on a curve, so do bear that in mind, but the valve gear does look really nice. So see the two six four wheel arrangement. That on the Oigara Railway, where one of these is dressed up as Thomas. Only the drivers are painted blue. The pony truck and the rear bogey, they are not. The front bogey rear pony truck, the unpowered wheels are left. Uh, in the black that Japanese locomotives are normally painted in and oh, I don't need the flash this gap here is where the number plate goes in so there's one at the front on the smoke box door one on the back of the uh, coal bunker and then one on each side on the tanks what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the train together and the very plasticky sort of cover on that open wagon is removable. Um, but I'll leave it on for the running. But I'm going to put the wagons on and let me just run it for a bit to show how it works. As I give um, my overall final thoughts on this set. There it is, as per the illustration on the front of the box, and the instructions as to which direction, which order to have this train in. And you can see the rear lights are on that brake van. All in all, this is a very good way of getting into N, I think. 
you do get the Unitrack, which is very beginner friendly. However, Unitrack does get expensive the more you go into it. Yes, the points are sort of pre-wired up and got a motor on in them already, but they are a lot more expensive than the Pico points, for example. The ballast as well, it's nice having the ballast and having the track raised slightly off the carpet because it's better than running straight on the carpet. There's, there's nothing sort of coming up between the rails. I've only got to worry about stuff around the track, not through it. So that's a nice um, thing. And if you're building a layout set in a town scene, um, it's pretty good ballast for a town scene but um sure you're a bit more outside so into the so outside the towns in the, the countryside um ballast can tends to be a bit less gray a bit less perfect and in particular in japan this being a japanese train they are there's quite a lot of brown mixed in with the ballast the shoulder, the track shoulder, the height from the base of the ballast to the sort of sleepers is very high as well. So that's another thing to consider. That said, there is a lot of accessories. It's really beginner friendly, really easy to chuck together. And it stays together well as well. It's just bit more expensive and it's a bit um the, the realism of the ballast is nice but also it's not quite where it could be that's it it's a lot nicer having pre-ballasted track than having the ballast because ballasting is a pain so it swings in roundabouts really so you it's a good it's good things that it's ballasted already but it's also a little bit higher than i'd like and i'm living more of a countryside layout and if someone else sorry person the viewer of this review should there be one who is interested in this set if you're doing a more of a countryside theme is this ballast the right color whereas you can mix up your own blend of ballast and have it be exactly what you need it to be. The re-railer tool, this is absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, it's got the it's got a ruler, so I've got I can measure. It's got the distances to set for the tracks. Which is brilliant, and it's also the relax to help me get things on and off the track easier. It is absolutely brilliant. The controller, which doesn't have quite the degree of fine control of Gauge Master, which you could probably see over in the distance. There it is. But it's still the best train set quote-unquote controller there is out there and there's really easy plug-in system for adding your point um, control if you don't want to have the hand of god coming in which i don't mind so hand of god comes in flicks the points in terms of the wagons a c11 is an absolutely amazing locomotive does have traction tyres, but I kind of get why it's a smaller loco at a small scale, but it's got lights front and rear, and it's got tail lamps in the train set, which is amazing. And the space needed for this train set being N gauge is so much less than what you need with a double O or even the new TT stuff that Hornby's doing. It is all in all, it's a brilliant set, and you have three different wagons. 
yeah, it'd be nice if there was if there was some points. However, this is a beginner set. This isn't this isn't ent sort of the entry level steam locomotive set from Qatar. So it's it kind of makes sense for it just to be a loop. I would recommend this if you are looking to get into engage or you, and you don't have much track already or much rolling stock like I currently do and you just want something easy. Also, you're really interested in the engines or if you just want to build something three lance. And you get the controller, you get the transformer, you get the track, which is it's a decent length, decent width. Yeah, three wagons, a lit brake van, and a locomotive with lighting but in both directions. So whichever way it's going, it has the white light. It is a really good little set. And the, the controller is good. I can speed up quite happily, quite easily. But I do prefer... The Again, I prefer the combi. All in all, pretty good item, pretty good product. They do do other versions, so there is a diesel loco version, and I think there's an electric multiple unit version. So it's, you know, whatever takes your fancy. Um, they probably also do American image. Um, train sets using the same track and controller so if that's something which you're interested in um, you could have a look at for them this product code is 10-012 um, I don't know the product codes for any of the other train sets which they do and if you're interested in uni track but you do HO or double O they do have uh, this pre-ballasted, easy to snap together, easy to take apart track in 1 to 76, 1 to 80, 1 to 87, depending on what scale you're, you're doing, really, uh, British double O, Japanese HO, or European American HO, respectively. Yeah, all in all, really good little set. However, I will be keeping with the test loop here and hopefully in a couple of weeks it'll be built up and I'll actually be able to start building the layout properly instead of just having it as a test loop. Well, uh, thank you for watching this video. I'm going to clear up in here because there's bits of box everywhere. Um, send these over to my laptop and stick them all together and then upload this video so thank you for watching hopefully this was of use to someone and you also had an idea of how uni track works and how the controller plugs in to the track as well as what to expect performance and regards to the detail So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.